Today I want to share my ignition map with you and I want to share with you version 1.0. What does that mean? It means that there is room for future improvement but it also means that we're at a threshold, we're at some sort of a you know milestone where I think I've actually made a really nice ignition map for my bike carb converted 4AGE engine. Before I show you the map, a little disclaimer. Please do not blindly copy and paste this map. Every engine out there is different. A ignition map for an engine should be developed. Every sort of tuning you do, you do at your own responsibility. Do not copy and paste this map and then you're gonna get pre-ignition and then you're gonna get ping and then you won't notice it and then your engine is gonna blow up and then you're gonna say, before Ray gave me this map. No, don't do it. That's the disclaimer. Now, because I know you're gonna copy and paste it anyway, I'm gonna tell you something else. Before just blindly copy pasting it, please retard the whole ignition map across the board by at least three to four degrees. This is going to decrease, I'm underlining, decrease, not eliminate the chance of knock, pre-ignition, ping, whatever you want to call it. Okay, that being said, here is the map. Now, to give you some sort of sense and make this an educational and useful video, let's compare this map to the stock 4AGE ignition map. So, this is mine, and here's stock. Mine, stock. So, as you can see, the maps are pretty different. And you will see that my map is actually more advanced. Now, not more advanced as in better, but it has more ignition advance in certain areas. Now, my map has been developed over a relatively long course of time. It has been verified through a bunch of dyno runs. And then I also experimented a little bit with it on the side with a app, a dyno app called Perf Expert. You can check that app out. There's a video in the description and the suggested videos. You can see how it works and what it is and so on and so forth. Now, it's actually a pretty useful map. The app that can really help you do some really nice street tuning and get your engine very close to the ballpark and in the right tuning direction. Now, so here's my map again. And as you will see, these, this map actually has three main areas. And these are the three main areas. And these three main areas have a sort of different, each of them has a sort of a different task. Now, let's focus first on the top area, on the top, on the actually the bottom 30% of throttle input. On the side, uh, if you, in case you didn't know, on the side we have our throttle position uh, sensor signal, basically the input, basically how much the throttle is open. And up there, obviously, we have the RPMs. Now, on the bottom 30% of throttle input, the goal of this map is to provide fuel economy. And it does this by having a lot of advance there. And as you can see also on the stock 4AGE ignition map, there's quite a bit of advance there as well. Now, advance at the low RPM and the low throttle input is important because if you aren't advanced enough, and I tried it, your engine is gonna jerk back and forth, it's gonna be horrible, and it will force you to actually open the throttle up more, you know, uh, to have the engine actually moving, to have your car you know, keep going in your desired direction. So a lot of advance smoothens out everything at the low uh, throttle inputs and enables you to drive your car really nice and smooth and actually save a bit of fuel, especially on a carbureted engine where the only way to save fuel is to just give it very little bit of throttle and stay off the main jets. Now, here's something important when it comes to bike carbs and actually any sort of carburetors and the low throttle input. Big carbs, uh, bigger carbs are really good at making a bit more power at the top end than smaller carbs. But big carbs actually tend to be very sucky in these low throttle uh, input uh, sections of, you know, of the engine, uh, engine performance range. And 
no matter how much advance you give it there, uh, they're actually still gonna, you know, the engine is still gonna be jerking back and forth, and you actually might end up giving it too much advance and actually getting pre-ignition before you're uh, able to smoothen, you know, uh, the throttle response and the engine performance at the low throttle inputs with very large carbs. And this is what I've said in my other videos, and this is what Dan S. Desti Engineering, who are a bike carb conversion specialist, this is why for street cars, they always recommend the slightly smaller carbs because they will enable you to drive nice and smooth at the low throttle inputs, which is what you're forced to drive at many, you know, different conditions on the street. So that's our upper part of the, of the uh, actually upper part of the map, but our bottom part of our throttle input. Now be careful here again. Watch your uh, air fuel your air fuel ratios if you have an AFR gauge or from time to time do drive for a while with brand new spark plugs at this sort of throttle inputs and check your spark plugs. If you're too in here, again, it's never good and you might actually be having, you know, ping and, and pre-ignition without hearing it. So again, always be careful with advancing. This is what I ended up uh, as the optimal advance without any sort of knock and having the engine perform really nice. I can actually be on the highway in fifth gear driving around 60 to 70 miles per hour the engine is actually pretty quiet there. Everything is smooth and I'm kind of saving fuel, you know, as much as it's possible with a carbureted engine. Now, next up, it's our middle part of our ignition map. Now, this one is pretty, pretty quirky actually and pretty weird and I arrived at it with a lot of trial and error. So, this middle part is actually responsible for something that I really like about my engine. It's responsible, it's responsible for that little torque kick for the instant response I get at half throttle inputs. So when I'm driving at low throttle and I decide I want to speed up, I just give it half throttle suddenly and I get a beautiful kick. It's a literally, it's a kick in the seat and the car just, you know, just keeps going. It's very responsive, they're very nice, you do not have to open the throttle up fully and it just you know, gets the car going. And when I had my uh, my uh, stock ignition numbers here from the stock 4AG ignition map, this effect wasn't present at all. Unfortunately, it was very much reduced. The small size of the carbs contributed to this. It enabled me to have this sort of effect. But with the stock ignition numbers, the effect was very much reduced and wasn't as noticeable. So what I did is I tried advancing even more to think, you know, I'm going to get it, you know, I'm going to get there by advancing it. And it was even worse. The middle section didn't feel nice at all. It was still, the engine was still kind of punchy. You can feel there is potential there, but something was off. And then I say, then I said, you know what, let's try retarding these numbers in this middle section. And the more I retarded them, the better it got. And eventually I arrived at this at this sort of numbers in, the, in this section of the map, which may look kind of weird and at a very significant contrast to the, you know, low throttle inputs and to the wide open throttle part. So, but this is what it is. This is what the carb, carbs want. And this is what makes this engine feel really, really nice in this sort of, you know, uh, level of throttle input and RPM range. So that's the middle part. It worked for me. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna work for you. Definitely experiment and again, be wary of knock. And we have our last part of throttle input, which is the top, let's say 30% of throttle input. And we have only one goal here. We, the goal is screaming. The goal is actually maximum performance. And all I did here was gradually, gradually advance my, uh, my ignition uh, timing until I got this at this sort of, uh, uh, at, with these, I ended up actually with these numbers and they performed really, really nice. I actually confirmed this on the dyno twice. I even confirmed it uh, with, the, with the little Perf Expert app and both the app and the dyno agreed. And even my gut feeling, you know, which is definitely the least accurate thing is your butt dyno. It, it can do something. It's not entirely useful, useless, but definitely not the most accurate thing. So do not rely on the bad dyno, it can get you somewhere, but it's never gonna have the last word when it comes to tuning, that's for sure. So anyway, all three of the little dynos agreed that this is it. These are the numbers that gave me optimum performance. And something really important, 
first do your cam timing before you do your ignition timing. While I had my sort of vague cam timing that I thought was the best subjectively, I actually needed a lot more advance at top throttle inputs, at wide open throttle to get the performance I wanted. After I did my cam timing, that sort of adva advance wasn't necessary anymore at all and I actually gained power by reducing ignition advance at wide open throttle. That's the phone, sorry. We're gonna silence it. Very unprofessional. So that's, that's my ignition map. Uh, if you have any sort of questions related to it, feel free to ask me in the comments section and I'll be happy to oblige and reply to the best of my knowledge. Again, I'm gonna repeat, an ignition map is best developed and it will be slightly different probably for every engine. So that's it for the ignition map. There will be improvements on this in the future. We'll probably have a version 1.5, version 2.0 or something if I come up with something even better than this. But for now, this is it. I hope it's a useful thing for you. It's at least a learning experience and at the very best, it's actually a starting point. If you have a similar 4AG with a similar mild build like mine, you can take this map and as I said, very important, retard it across the board and then go from there. Do not just copy and paste it unless you are sure that everything else is spot on, unless you are sure that your cam timing is done, unless you are sure that everything else is ready for this sort of an ignition map. So, that's pretty much it. As always, thanks a lot for watching. If you found this useful, don't forget to hit the like button. Also consider sharing, liking, I said like, no idea, subscribing and all that stuff. It does help this channel. I do appreciate it a lot and it does motivate me to make more, better, more useful, you know, and all, sort of, all sorts of other improvements to my content. So that's it. I'm going to shut up now and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.